Hello everyone, this is 1-800-LAWYER-UP from FormalFocus.com And I sound like an infomercial or a, a priest doing a sermon And uh, even though I'm Catholic, <laughs> even though I'm not like a avid professing Catholic You know, I honestly feel if I stepped inside a church I would spontaneously combust into flames Just because I've, I've been, uh, I don't know, maybe bastardly and I haven't been uh, a professing Catholic and, and getting my religious points up, but <laughs> yeah, I'm getting off topic. Yes, I am 100, 1 800 lawyer up, and uh, I'm from formalfocus.com. I am indeed a lawyer. I crossed the bar in 2018. I made some uh, wise investments. I joined the two comma club. I no longer have to work. I'm quasi retired. Uh, but according to the Law Society of Alberta, since I am inactive, I'm not actively practicing law, I cannot give out any legal advice whatsoever. So uh, please, if you are seeking legal advice, find a actively practicing lawyer in your area. And that just makes sense. Why in the world would you go to uh, my secret public diary, you know, along with m my dozen fans who, uh, who actively see... It's probably like just my mom and her Tupperware uh, group <laughs> uh, who watch these. But uh, in any event, you know, please find... Uh, Someone who's actively practicing in an area. That just makes sense. Uh, finally, um, these are entirely unscripted. Uh, I have nothing in front of me. Actually, no, I actually do have something in front of me. It's a notepad. But uh, I got a notepad, and I only wrote ice cream on it. One thing. Well, I guess it's two things. Ice and cream with a hyphen in between. And that was like an unintentional rhyme. That's awesome. But, um, yeah, ADHD. So I have a notepad with one thing on it, but uh, other than that, it's entirely unscripted. I don't re-record whatever I have, I, I just roll with. And that's just to keep the genuineness of the secret public diary. And, uh, you know, also sometimes I have a limited amount of time. You know, I, I can't just I'll go around spending hours uh, recording only, you know, 10 minutes of material. <laughs> So, those are the rules. Uh, welcome to entry number five of my secret public diary, and it's just entitled Ice Cream. Ice Cream is sprinkle. Because, you know, who doesn't like ice cream? But uh, I'm going to use the simple example of two friends, um, Sarah and Barbie, uh, which, I don't know, just came to my head. For some odd reason, I don't know, I just think of Sarah, and I... I I, I see a Barbie that uh, <laughs> belongs to the girlfriend's uh, cousin. Oh, well, uh, I think she left it at my place. And uh, there's a Barbie here. It, it kind of freaked me out because it's like a tiny person. And, you know, it's sitting in the living room. And when it's dark, it looks like, I don't know, it looks like a miniature person who, who's very dangerous. Uh, yes, I've got a problem with tiny people. <laughs> you heard it here. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm getting off track. Sarah and Barbie. They're going to buy ice cream from Carl's amazing ice cream truck. And uh, what could go wrong? I mean, it's just a simple fact of two friends buying ice cream. And, you know, it's a simple thing. And, and the law can't be complicated. You know, the law can't complicate a simple transaction such as this. Well, let me tell you. The law is complicated. Even with just buying ice cream from Carl's Amazing Ice Cream Truck. Because Barbie buys the ice cream, gives it to Sarah, and with just one lick, she gets super sick. You know, she's sick to the point where she's throwing up all over the place. You know, and, and she's like a famous Instagram model, right? And like, she's sponsored, and you know, she's got this obligation to the fans, of, you know. Uh, making an Instagram post every day and she can't because she's too pale from throwing up and like even her filters can't even save her it's so bad like the ice cream is so poisonous right so you know these ladies you know go to a law office you know they're like what can we do now as a lawyer even though I'm not actively practicing what I would be thinking if I was actively practicing this is not legal advice but you know this is, this is my thought process um, well, who's at fault here? You know, who has a claim and who do they need to claim it against, right? Um, so the thing is, like, the contract was between uh, Barbie initially, right, with Carl's Amazing Ice Cream. And she bought the ice cream for both of them 
Sarah actually doesn't have a contract with Carl's Amazing Ice Cream at all. The ice cream to her was a gift. But she's the one who suffered the damages. She was the one thrown up and couldn't post an Instagram post that was worth $10,000 because she's sponsored and has so many followers. She couldn't fulfill her Instagram model duties, right? And that's why the House of Lords, I think it was the House of Lords, I don't know, I gotta double check. I'll, I'll like make a comment or like put a little like thing if it wasn't the House of Lords. But it was Donahue and Stevenson back in the day that actually allowed third party rights. Um, and you know, it's a cornerstone case which allowed um, big corporations, so let's say Apple, you know, they outsource a lot of their products and labor because it's, it's much cheaper for them and it makes the product much cheaper for, for us. I use Apple products too as well. Um, so let's say they have a problem with glass. So, you know, they, they outsource to a different company to get a particular type of glass with particular quality specifications. And that company deals with another company, and then that company sends it back to uh, the company that was originally contracted for the work, and they send it back to Apple. Now, let's say the, gra the glass is like, completely defective, and it like, explodes every time the battery turns on, and it's just like glass scrapnel just hitting people's faces, right? And it's like a huge liability issue. Well, uh, now Apple has, because of... A case like Don Hewan Stevenson has third party rights and it can actually go after that company that they never had any dealings with, right? At all, because it was uh, completely contracted out by another company that they, they actually did have contact with. So, um, you know, Barbie and Sarah, because of one mishap. Um, and see, the Don Hewan Stevenson was actually because of ginger beer. So it was like this new beer, and um, I guess it was like ginger flavored, and the bottles were not see-through. Um, so uh, there was like a, actually a dead snail in one, and a friend, you know, wanted her friend to try ginger beer, so she, she bought, you know, ginger beer for both of them. But her friend's beer bottle actually had a dead snail in it, but since she actually didn't have any transaction with the company that made her sick, because it was a gift, you know, she had no legal action, but the courts actually changed that. Another thing, too, is, I mean, Carl's Amazing Ice Cream, right? You have, um, it, let's say it's a huge franchise, and there are a lot of ice cream trucks around the country, and it's, it's well known. Um, what if it was one particular employee? Maybe there's nothing wrong with the ice cream. Maybe it was just the employee who, who uh, mishandled the ice cream. Maybe he took a a big number two deuce and didn't wash his hands <laughs> Man, that's disgusting but uh you know it, it could be true i mean it's an ice cream truck i'm assuming that they're in a suburban area right um and there's no, probably not a bathroom like close by or at least you know if you gotta go you gotta go uh radius <laughs> so like he's not gonna knock on some stranger's house and ask to use her toilet and just completely destroy it you know, he probably used some bushes and, and didn't wipe properly and didn't wash his hands properly, right? So it was like tainted ice cream. Uh, that's why Sarah got sick, right? And then um, because of that, right, um, we have now agency laws through um, like a, a case law in Canada, right? Because of this problem. Because there were too many big corporations that were claiming non-liability issues because... Um, you know, it wasn't actually them. It was like a negligent employee. But now the law states, if you are an employee of that agency, right, that big corporation, then you the, the big corporation is just vicariously liable, right? So um, now they actually have an action against, uh, you know, Carl's Amazing Ice Cream. And it's an institution that can actually afford paying the damages. And another legal issue is, like, how do you measure damages, right? Like, she has an Instagram following, you know, uh, one post for hers, $10,000, right? So you could make the argument that Carl's Amazing Ice Cream has to pay Sarah $10,000, you know, for that post that she missed in her obligation. But what about um, intangibles? Like, since she didn't meet her obligation, does she lose sponsors? How do we measure 
how much money she gets from the sponsors. Is it the remainder of her contract or, um, you know, what if it was a, a tiered contract where she would get more money as, you know, she her performance increases and her followers increase, right? What about the followers she lost? So, I scream, you scream, we all scream, foul play. But, I mean, something as simple as buying ice cream can be as, as complicated as that, right? And that's why you need lawyers who kind of know all these questions and to ask themselves in order to come up with legitimate answers and come up with a, a new nuanced... I just got a beep here. Damn. It's like 3.22 a.m. Who could possibly be texting me? It's probably a lawyer with uh, questions because they need my nuanced brain. But that's it for now. Um, the law is complicated. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, and I will see you next time. I swear, Miss Wrinkle.